What country do you associate with windmills? Holland, of course. Spain, with Don Quixote tilting at them. Well, how about the United States? Here's Hari Srinivasan. Take the lead, Terry. Take the lead. West Texas is cowboy country. Yeah. 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 Here, scratching out a living is often dictated by what a cow can fetch. Or a barrel of oil brings. Dry, dusty towns are dotted with reminders of hard times. Vacant motels. Rusted cars parked at drive-in theaters that have long stood silent. Theaters where crowds once flocked to see films that reflected their lives. Films like Giant. Set in West Texas, Giant told the real-life story of cattle barons refusing to change with the times. This is a cattle ranch, not an oil field. That's the way it's going to stay. That resistance to change and the desire to preserve a way of life still remain. But today, the cause for concern is different. With rusted and retired pump jacks standing as witnesses of booms and busts gone by, a new giant looms on the horizon. Wind turbines. They're sprouting as fast as Texas wildflowers. They say everything is bigger in Texas, and windmills are no exception. This thing is taller than the Statue of Liberty. That huge turbine up there, it's longer than an 18-wheeler. And each one of these can power more than 500 homes. From the air, you can see them on almost every mesa, stretching for miles. But you can look back over here, yeah. and you can just keep seeing them. The further you look, the see another run, or another run, and another run. Rancher Raymond McDaniel has more than 50 wind turbines on his land. So you're saying this is one of the small ones? Yes, this is one of the small ones. <laughs> For most ranchers in these parts, McDaniel says it was a struggle just to break even in the cattle business. There was no water, and there was no grass, and there was no market. So everything went downhill pretty good. And, uh... But the money they received from leasing land to power companies and their turbines, he says, has given ranchers some breathing room, money to better tend to their land and their cattle. I'm offended, okay, that my neighbor would sell himself for money and not care what it did to me. Not everyone is jumping on the bandwagon. In fact, the turbines have set neighbor against neighbor. So you got wind turbines there, transmission lines there, wind turbines there. Yes. Dale Rankin's property is surrounded by wind farms, and he's no fan of the giants dominating the landscape. I'm all for people making money. I'm all for people having a profit, making an income. But I think you need to be considerate of your neighbors when you're in that pursuit. And the turbines are multiplying. West Texas is the fourth largest nation for wind energy today. There's Germany, Spain, uh, India, and West Texas. Greg Wortham is one of a new breed of prospectors pursuing right. wind and energy and riches. He cashed in his retirement savings to start the West Texas Wind Energy Consortium and is trying to rally local support for renewable energy. And he's no carpetbagger. Wortham grew up in Sweetwater, Texas and walked its streets back when it was an oil and gas town. You could always tell you were home, even if you were sleeping in the car on the way home, because you began to smell oil, which was a beautiful smell. After high school, he headed off to college and the big city, where he worked as an energy attorney in New York and Washington, D.C. This house was built in about 1905. Now he's back, living in a renovated house just off Main Street, and he was recently elected mayor. Didn't come back here to be the mayor. I mean, that wasn't the plan, but... Uh, you know, part of it's, you know, having been in New York on September 11th and realizing you've got one country, one hometown, and one, one lifetime to do something. For him, that something is helping to spark a wind energy gold rush. So far, more than $6 billion has been invested in 120 West Texas counties. We hear nationally that people are being laid off by tens of thousands. It's like they need to come here. And we hear nationally that housing starts are down. Well, West Texas needs hundreds of new, very high-quality homes. 
To meet hiring demands, the community college has added courses in wind technology. Typical gearbox in a GE 1.5. Students are shifting gears to train for careers in wind farming because the pay is two to three times the local average. It's such a new career field that you cannot find people generally, especially in this area, that have any experience. The industry has given the entire region a second wind, generating new businesses and new construction. Schools are scoring as well. Take tiny Trent, Texas, for example. With only 60 students, it's the smallest high school in the state with a turf football field. Compare it to the field they used to play on. What used to be one of the poorest schools in the state is now state of the art. You know, we've got two computer labs, one for the elementary, one for the high school. You know, we're getting projectors in every classroom. Superintendent Greg Pretty says none of this would have been possible without a healthy new tax base fueled by the turbines on the mesa behind the school. I don't know if y'all got out here at night, but every one of these has a red blinking light on them. So it's like bizarre. I mean, it's like going into the twilight zone. But opponents like Dale Rankin worry all that income may be short-lived. He wonders what might happen if tax subsidies the companies rely on come to an end. They'll shut them off and walk away. And we'll be left with thousands and thousands of these monsters, you know, littering the landscape. But that's not the way ranchers like Raymond McDaniel see it. What do you think when you see all those? Changing world. Monsters in the making or harbingers of a new way of life once again, the winds of change are blowing across West Texas.